There is another stretch of fence. No, no chocolate bars now. Rosa, we're really... You've got a whole penguin bar in your mouth. Good morning, folks. Sun's out. Oh, we've got more jobs to do. First up, fencing. So we've got this bit of a cliff going on here, which is not child friendly. So we're just gonna put a fence back in here. It looks like there was one once upon a time anyway. I need to do the same up at the main gate. So I've got eight foot, 2.4 meter length, and I'll cut them through the middle. But first up, let's go and find some tools, see what timber we can salvage. Now before we distract ourselves with sawdust and power tools, we need to go and do some investigating. Not quite time team, but not far off. Sorry it's a bit breezy. You might remember yesterday, we had a contractor come out and just look at a fencing job. Well, a lot of fencing. Uh, and part of that will involve taking his tractor, but also our tractor, across the brook. Come on Maggie. So one job is this L, about 300 meters. So along this hedge on the inside, a couple of strainers in the middle where it changes direction. A run up to the gate and then another 100 meters or so up to the top corner. Now in fencing terms, that's probably the most straightforward of the lot. Relatively straight runs can be pulled in one, well, two sections. But the other side of the brook is where it's a bit, a bit more windy, Access is harder, ground softer. Basically everything's against us. You can see down here, it's a little bit, it's dried up a bit now, but these reedy bits. I don't know what this grass is called. Somebody let me know, because otherwise I'll keep calling it reeds. But this is just where either the soak away or just surface water drains down. All right, so at the moment, the only way to get over the other side into the other field, the secret meadow is through here and up there. This side seems okay. That side's a bit swampy. The previous owner tells me that underneath all this, there are concrete sleepers. So I'm gonna have a poke around. So he wasn't lying, there's a sleeper there. We're going across this way. So I'm gonna guess there's a few of them up. A really solid bed in this brook. So I'm thinking you could almost park the tractor here, clear it out with the bucket a bit. Might be a stupid idea. I'm pretty sure all of you are wishing me to have a go at this and get stuck, but <laughs> we'll see. These big ag tire tracks. So the big tractor has got up here fine. Right, what I'm thinking, I found two sleepers, so I assume they go all the way up. I'm thinking we bring the tractor down. That side we're coming downhill, should be all right. We park it just here. We clean up, clean up this bank with the bucket. And if we need to, we either take a run up and just go for it and try and spin the mud out the tires to keep them clean, or we, we pull ourselves up with the bucket, I guess. I've done that with a mini digger. Not sure. Yeah, I guess you do it with the tractor as well. Dog's getting braver. As you can imagine, it's pretty easy to get distracted here. I'm meant to be doing fencing and filling potholes today. Having seen the farm most seasons of the year now, this is about as low as the brook gets. So if there's any time to get through it, it's now. It doesn't dry up or anything like that in the summer. But remember, we are planning to build a bridge, a footbridge here, which will be timber. And then just a little bit further along, we're gonna put in a steel bridge to get vehicles across. That'd be for our vehicles. Big sort of 150 horsepower or more tractors like the fencer would use, he could take through the brook. I'm not trusting my engineering. But it'll be fine for vehicles like cars, trucks, compact tractors, mini diggers, all that sort of Right, I bolted that one onto the steel. It's all getting a bit piggledy piggledy hodgepodge here. But... Now 
I just need to sink a post in here, put some big bolts into there. Should probably find a string line. Right, I'm going to tack it in place with some long screws. No string line, but a straight piece of CMS at 4.8 metres, if there ever, ever is such a thing. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Things are plumb. So if we run a rail, I don't know, 300 mil up. Two point four meters. I'm going to go at one point one for this fence, and then whatever's left, the one point three, we'll use for the gate or the gate fence. Now we'll just go the middle. Right, I just struggled to cut those. I'm fed up with this saw. It definitely needs upgrading. That was a fully charged, newish battery. And it just bogs down so quickly, being that it's eighteen volt. I think it's time to. Do some research. I'm sure, I'm sure Bosch have a powerful one. You can look what it is. on the better side of farming but it's still not my finest work I don't think it's going to blow over there now remember this is not aesthetics this is all about making sure the kids don't jump off or fall off or send a vehicle over the edge or anything like that so we'll clean it up a bit top rail just redwood, just softwood is not treated. Bottom rail is a proper fencing rail. We've got all sorts. I think these were just packers from delivery. So as long as it lasts us probably 18 months to two years, we're all good. We can reuse all the timber, that's fine, but it needs to be strong enough to serve its purpose and get through a couple of winters. Prevailing wind is this direction. But, but with these big coach screws into here, sleepers, I think are full height. I think we're okay. Obviously everything was silver down, these are just where top of the pack I guess. And these are 150 board, most time feather edges 125. But this is what they gave me uh, and I wasn't ready that fast so maybe it's because they were 2.4 meter lengths, they're normally 150 at that length. Anyway, on to the next bit. That might be the end of the day. I've got the rails on the top section, everything's cut. But I've got Rosie with me now. The kids have got swimming and I think I might have just met my match with this day. The good news is no one's falling off here. Is she there? Oh, there is another stretch of fence. No, no chocolate bars now. 
for the map we're going home to have tea we do have another stretch to do of the fencing in the yard i might just do post and rail either way it's getting expensive but like the prices of everything feather edge is not cheap well nothing's cheap is it anymore also we need to get on and plant these because they've been in a bucket of water for too long now we've got about a hundred poplar trees not quite sure when i thought we were going to do that at least they don't need any digging you just jab them in and you can already see just from being in the water there's some of the little root nodules forming so they should rock it you know two two meters even in the first year right. rosa we're really you've got a whole penguin bar in your mouth all right come with me come with me we need to lock up all right you go workshop through the barn and out the other side Cam. Razor, you stand there so they can't get past you, okay? okay. I think we'll uh, do a carrot and the stick rather than the herding. Look what I've got, girls. Down in my tuck shop, I've got some corn. Alright, get a load of this, and then they'll all hear you. Come on in. Good girls. Is everyone in? No, no, they're not, are they? Come on, you four. Um, um, a chicken go under. Under the door? Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to leave it there. Another hodgepodge day, as always. But we're getting one step closer to being dog proof, just so she doesn't go walkabouts. And we're one step closer to being fairly child safe and ready for pigs. The two biggest dangers from a full perspective were off here and we've just got some mesh along there now and of course the little cliff edge that we've sorted today but a good day's work i think now let's get on with the editing thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time